precious Lord. Oh, glory to God. Blood brothers and sisters. Appreciate the Lord tonight. Amen. Appreciate him for that song. Appreciate the spirit that I feel. Um, I want to say yes, Lord, yes. Uh, every time he speaks, a lot of times he speaks, and I know I hear and still don't say yes. Uh, that, that always take me to Paul. He said, what I want to do I don't do, but what I do, I don't want to do. But then in, in the end, he said, you thank God for Jesus Christ. That's an answer. That's a way. If I listen, if I take heed to instructions that's uh, given uh, from the ministry, uh, not just from the ministry, God used people uh, all throughout just life. Out in the stores, he used people to talk to you. Still will not hearken to that voice. Help, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help me, Lord. Because I want to do what God want me to do. I want to be clean before man and God. I don't want to, I don't want a double standard life. I want a, a one-way life. You know, uh, oftentimes as God take us from what we used to be and trying to put us in this road that we going down, yeah. he says the carnal mind mm -hmm. is not subject mm -hmm. to the law of God. Yeah. And yeah. and most of the time when he's telling us yes or telling me yes, yeah. my carnal mind is saying no. Mm -hmm. You could do this. Uh, it, it gonna be all right. You could do that. It gonna be all right. But no, that's a lie. It's not yeah, gonna be right. all right. That's, right. that's a lie. Yeah. That's deceiving myself. Yeah. And uh, anybody that falls in the category, yes. we are deceiving ourselves yes. Yes. if we're not hearkening to the word of God. Yes. They tell me to love my enemies, so why hate them? Yes. It's easy to sing that song, and it sounds good. Yes. But when it comes to walking that walk and yes. putting it in practice, yes. he told those one who was the, the uh, Pharisees or something, he told me, he said, uh, you, you worship me with your lips. But your heart is far from me. I don't want just a lip service with God. I want my heart to be right with God. And that brings me back to think about David again. Create me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. I appreciate the Lord for this weight. I appreciate the Lord for this place of safety. It's a refuge. It's a place where my mind can be uh, conditioned into the way that I can hear and listen. And then take heed. Because just hearing and listening ain't going to get it. There has to be some taking heed to the instructions of the Father. I appreciate the Lord for being here. I was trying to get ready for church. And all week long I've been battling this feeling, feelings that come over me about a memory of something that happened a long time ago. And. Uh, these feelings come back about, you know, just feeling uh, angry, rejected, bitterness tries to stir up. And so I've been battling those things, trying to overcome them. Yeah. And in the midst of all that, I was busy and tired and trying to get ready for church. And I was in my closet just going, God, I don't know what to wear. I don't know what the attitude to have. I just don't know nothing. I was just frustrated. And all of a sudden, the Lord quickened me right then and there and said, you know exactly what to wear. You know exactly what attitude to have. You know exactly how to do this and exactly how to do that. And he just showed me. He has been showing me. For 30 years, I've been getting instructions on how to come into this place. And what to wear when I come in. What kind of attitude to have. What kind of spirit to have. It ain't based on my feelings. And it's just like a little gentle reminder. He was like, and then then I got here and Sister Gina picked that song. And he said, I'm going to lead you. You don't have to worry about not being led, about not knowing what to do. Brother Jermaine, all we have to do is obey. He's already laid it out for us. We just have trouble obeying it. <laughs> <laughs> but I just appreciate God for that little gentle reminder again. You've already got it laid out in front of you what to do. I just have to be obedient and keep on trying to make it up <laughs> to pray in the morning. And even though I just I fall a lot of times 
And I just let this flesh have its way, sleep on, sleeper, you know, <laughs> whatever. But yeah, I want to do what's right. I want to obey God. I want to lay this flesh down and, and let him have his control. I just want to thank God tonight. He's been just good all the time, all the time. I appreciate the, the spirit that we felt in here. When Sister Candace was going forth last night, I could just feel it. You know, the Holy Ghost run breast to breast. <laughs> When she was going forth back there, I had to go back there and just get with her and go on praise him with her. And I mean, I, I appreciate that for the release that she got tonight. I thank God for that and be a witness of that. And he's going to do even more for you, Candace. The more obedience that you come into God, he's going to open doors you ain't even seen yet. I receive that for you. He's going to open even more doors for you as you become more obedient to him. I appreciate the Lord. That's what he's calling for. He just want a yes. Can I use you? Will you let me use you? That's what he's calling for. You want a willing vessel to do what he tells you to do. Go when he say go. Speak when he say speak. I say speak a word in season. My God, I appreciate the Lord. I embrace in my story. Embrace in my story of what he's done for me. I appreciate the Lord. I was at work today. And you know, that's how God does things. He yeah. takes us through so many things yeah. because yeah. it's not for us. No. It's for us to share with somebody else yeah. what he's done for us. Yeah. I appreciate the Lord. Yeah. One of my co-workers was just sitting down and we began to just talk about how you got to be content in whatever state you're yeah. in. Yeah. Sometimes we just don't understand why God takes us through yeah. so many come things. On, on, Sometimes it's a valley. Come on. Sometimes yeah. we're on the mountain. Yeah. But you know, when I was in the valley, that's when I got to know him the most. Yeah. Can't nobody take that from me. I got to know him the most. How gentle he was. Hallelujah. How he had his eye just for me. I'm watching out for you. You don't have to worry about nothing because I got you. I appreciate the Lord and as I was sharing that today with her, the different things that he brought me through, the tears just begin to flow down her face. She began and I felt it. I said, oh God, I appreciate you. Because I got to tell somebody what you done that if you just bring me back when I was messed up in my mind y'all know those that were here uh, didn't know who I was and didn't know where I was but I said God if you bring me back if you bring me back and give me my right mind back I'll tell somebody about you I tell it on the to top how you brought me out I tell it on everywhere I go what you've done for me that your mind regulator I will never witness that you're a hero oh God Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Christianity huh, is a lifestyle. When I turn my life around and I begin to walk the straight and the narrow, that's when I see things start happening. But it was happening for my good. I didn't understand all of or why it was happening, but I'm understanding it's working for my good. This thing here, he, he didn't promise us a cakewalk. He did not promise that. But he promised that he was going to be with us through it all. I appreciate him. He'll be with me till the end. You know, men will fail you. But that's why you can't put your trust in him. We got to put all our trust and our hope in God. I'm a living witness that he'll be with you till the end. My God. When things look rough, when things look like I can't go on, my back up is against the wall. That's when God steps in. That's when he steps in and says, this is a, a matter for Dr. Jesus. This is a matter for King Jesus. Cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. I appreciate the Lord tonight. So I just want to stand and lift my voice. And tell somebody God is good. All the time. Bless him. The way that this service is going, I know for a factor that this service is for me. Thank you, Jesus. I, um, I almost didn't make it tonight just because I was going to let so many other things stand in my way. But I was on the phone having a conversation in the middle of the conversation. I just said, I got to go. I got to go to church. Because God has been so good to me. He really has. Yes. 
and listen to Sister Rochelle and the songs that have gone forth and everything. The moment that I walked in the door, I felt the spirit of the Lord. Yes. I just have to say that I could not not share my testimony today. I've been contemplating when do I share it? How do I share it? Who can I touch? Who can I give it to that it may bless them? And I just feel like today is the day. I feel like today is the day because I have so much to be grateful for. And he has shown me so much over the process of this year. I'm nine days away from another birthday. And last year, this time on December 12th, I had to emergency evacuate a home that I had just moved into. I felt like my life was crumbling. I had a surgery. I lost my job that was making the most money I ever made in my entire life. I thought that everything was about to be perfect in my life. And just because of a surgery, everything fell apart. I decided I was gonna put my trust in man and I was dating someone and I said, you know, if everything is falling apart, if I trust him, he says that he's gonna be able to hold me down and make sure that everything is okay and that I should merge with him. And I moved out of my place and I gave up everything that I knew was my own independence and walked into hell. Knowing it was the wrong move to make, but not really knowing what the right one was, I walked into it anyway. And the moment I did, everything started to fall apart. I later found out that the person that I was dealing with was stealing my identity, cleaned out my accounts, and I put everything that I had into my situation until a moment that I found out the person had an insurance policy in my name without being married to me or anything. And I knew I needed to escape. So I had to work one day, but I called and I had a moving company to come and move my things out without even packing. And I put my things in storage and moved in with a friend. And I couldn't figure out how I was going to put everything back together with the new job that I had and the money that I was making and just everything that had been destroyed as it pertains to my credit and my life in general it just felt like everything was crumbling. And I kept getting signs of people making comments like, you should just go home. But I didn't want to go home. I just felt like I was I was going backwards. I was walking away from everything that I worked so hard for. But it's interesting how everything has changed in the dynamic of my thought process because the more God took from me and stripped from me, the, the more I had no other choice. And I tried one thing. I said, okay, I'm going to go to Detroit. Because I'm a big city girl. And that's just where I need to be. It's the city and it's going to bring me more clients. It's going to bring me more of this. And, you know, I'll be close to my family. I could go home and visit when I want to. But God didn't want that either. He wanted me back here. And I've, and I've known it and I'm watching it, but I'm just listening and I'm talking to God like, but but what about and what about that and why me it just felt so overwhelming it just seemed like one thing after another is just slowly but surely being stripped from me but one thing i can say for sure is because of the way i've been raised and what i know i couldn't do nothing but trust him it became to a point where i had no other choice but just to trust him and what I can say and honestly say is that he has provided for me every day since I have made it here. I haven't had a job. I haven't had to ask for nothing. He has made sure that every need that I have has been provided for without a doubt, without question. My clientele has grown tremendously without question since I've been in this area. It didn't happen for me in Detroit. It's happening for me here. This is home. This is where God wanted me to be. 
and I had no other choice. It's like he stripped everything from me because he knew that that was the only way that I was gonna make the decision to be back in this place. And since I have been here, I have had nothing but a peace. No, I don't have anything compared to what I had there, but I have a peace beyond belief in the house of the Lord, around the people of God, with my family, and every aspect of my life, I have a peace. And then, <laughs> the moment where I just decided, you know, Lord, I'm going to change some things. I'm going to walk closer to you. I'm going to pray a little bit more. I'm going to be more conscious about the steps that I make and the decisions that I make. The more God has just continued to open doors. It was just last week. I went in, well, two weeks ago or so, I went in with a girlfriend and I was helping her pick some things in the store and somebody asked me, well, do you need a job? Because you seem so educated and you know so much about the brand and blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, yeah. You know, just because I've been a, a little bit afraid to work for anybody else because I don't want to get caught in that again because I know what my gifts are and I know where God brought me from. Yes. But um, I went in and I got the job and <laughs> it just was such a shock to me because I've been working so hard at trying to find something when I was in that mental state and he didn't open any of those doors in Detroit. It didn't matter how deep my resume is and how many 18 year, 18 plus years experience. It didn't matter if I was a district manager in another state. It didn't matter how many people I've touched. It didn't matter how many people I trained. They did not want me. And I just couldn't understand it because I've never had a problem getting a job. I've never had a problem presenting myself. But for some reason, in this particular instance, it didn't matter how well I interviewed, I walked away with nothing. But then I come here, and the moment that I barely try, he just gave me what I needed. And I said, Lord, well, Oh, you know what? I just couldn't believe it, and I started working on something else. And I've been working on a business plan with Cornerstone. And the other day, I just happened to ask to go and see a building, and I felt like the Lord told me to go and look at. I felt like I said that this is where you're supposed to be. I really, it was the craziest thing. It was just a feeling. <laughs> I walk into this place because our sister said I think you need to focus on getting some things taken care of as it pertains to your living situation and the moment I walk through the doors in this place I just felt something all over me and in the back of my mind the devil just kept trying to make me have so much doubt I was so afraid of this situation, but I knew I couldn't allow fear to take over because he's been carrying me every day for a whole year. Every day with nothing. He has taken care of me. So I walked by faith into the situation. I said my prayer, and I didn't look back at the Lord open the door and when I say it seems so smooth and it seems so seamless and I just I can't even believe it that he will give me the desires of my heart actually exceedingly and abundantly above everything that I could ask or think because not only is my displaced homeless situation taken care of but my business situation is taken care of and it's everything I have ever wanted. So I stand before you today just to say that my God is real. He is real. He is beyond real. And I've always known it. I just have to praise him today because nobody can imagine the turmoil that I have experienced over the process of this year. And as it approaches, the 12th day of December of the following year, 
I see the Lord working in my life. And I didn't think it was possible. I said, if I lose everything, then how do I pick up from here? How do I fix it? I thought, oh my God, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't have this. I don't have a person in my life that can help me. But he showed me just like, this is, this is just said that I don't need a man in my life. My God is real. My father can't provide. He can't take care of every need that I have, and then some, and need that I imagine, and then some. So why am I waiting on a man or someone to come out of this blue and be able to do what he can do for me. It's just the most beautiful thing. And I am so grateful. And I just wanted to share my story. I just want to share my testimony. I've been afraid to share because I have felt like it wasn't open. And I said, if I stand and talk about it and I'm in the midst of it, I don't think that it will be as profound as it will when what happens at the end of this actually transpires. But I just want to thank him today. Thank you, Jesus. I'm grateful to have my mom back. <laughs> but even more so, I can truly say that even her being gone was a part of his plan. Because what we choose to do sometimes or what we tend to do is find someone else to lean on because we see him to think that they're stronger in the Lord. So you're going to lean on them for whatever power you feel or you're going to, you know, expect that their prayers are going to be more, you know, than your own. But he took her away from me for three months and made me comfortable. It made me focus. It made me realize that it's not about her walk with him. It's about my own. I'm grown. You know what I'm saying? I need to really draw into him myself. I can't expect her to carry me. You know, she raised me. She brought me here. She showed me the way. It's my turn. It's my time to pick up and trust him and to have the faith that he showed me. So she comes back, and this already happened. My God is real, and I'm just so grateful. Give God a testimony. Candace, God really is real. Um, a couple days ago, I decided I wanted to go to Maryland for New Year's. So I've been looking for some plane tickets, and I found one for $79, $79 for one way. And so I said, well, I didn't book it that day. So I said, I'm going to wait till tomorrow. I'm going to book it. So I waited, and uh, it went up to regular price. So I was so bummed. I said, man, I really want I just want to get a flight. And so later that day, I'm at work, and I was calling somebody for a phone interview. And I'm waiting on them to answer, and nobody, they didn't answer. I'm like, let me wait for the voicemail come on, and I'm going to leave a message. So as I'm listening, this recording comes on, and it says, congratulations, you're calling number 15, and you just want a cruise. And I'm like, this can't be real. So I'm about to hang the phone up. I said, no, let me stay on the phone. Let's keep listening. So I go through all the prompts. And then an actual radio person gets on the phone. And she said, congratulations. She said, um, thank you for calling. You're calling number 15, and you just want a two-night cruise to the Bahamas for two. And I said, is this real? She said, yes, this is real. So she told me what I had to do to go through the process. I had to go to her website to claim the tickets and everything. So I'm thinking, like, is this a scam or something? So I began to do my research on it and everything. And it was real. It was, it's a real deal cruise. So all about me making a mistake, dialing the wrong number, I got a cruise for free. And so I, and I started to leave my, I was upset about a $79 ticket. And I said, here, you go home trip for me. So I just appreciate God because it's just so wonderful.
beautiful. Just shows like people would say, that's luck. I can know that's God. That's right. <laughs> that, that just don't happen to anybody. That just shows I just appreciate his favor over my life. He just keeps showing me how much he loves me and cares for me. And he just keeps taking care of me. So I just appreciate God and I thank him for that. <laughs> Uh, I just want to thank the Lord for the rest. He's been opening up for me all my life since I came to the body of Christ. And um, I've been through a lot since I came to the body of Christ. I lost my son. You know, that was a hurting thing. But God brought me through. He brought me through. And I kept, I kept going to the world. You know, every time he blessed me, I go back to the world. Every time he blessed me, I go to the world. If, if, if the material things he blessed me with, it, if money he really blessed me with, that's with whatever. I used to get the money, whatever, and I still pay my time, but I'd get out of church. But the, I wasn't happy in the world. Mm -hmm. And this last time I came back, you know, I got blessed to come back. And um, <laughs> I don't think I don't think about what God gave me now, the house, none of that money, that don't mean nothing to me. Amen. It don't mean nothing because you can get it and lose it like yes, that. Yes. And um, I'm so grateful to know that, what it is. And it humbles me. I'm so humble. And I thank God because it don't make me. It what God gave me. He opened doors for me. Even the job situation, I appreciate my job. And um, how very, I appreciate Sister Baby. And I think I think I feel wonderful spirit that she has shown me. Yes. You know, and um yes. <laughs> came up and read the love, showed me, showed me the God through to the dead. She showed me how she appreciates me and how she trusts me. And I thank God for you, Sister Daddy. I thank yes. God yes. for bringing me yes. back home. Cause this is home no matter yes. where you go yes. to, this yes. is a home. Yes. Right? Yes. This is yes. your this is your family. Yes. You know, and God is your husband, no matter where man. He's still your husband. Right. He's my everything. I lean on him no matter Come what. On, yeah. I go through a lot, but you know, it's yeah. not, it's because of me. Yeah. I, it's it's my red sea open up for me. The things in my life, he take take away from me. I'm keep walking. Sometimes, you know, I don't know what it is. Sometimes I don't know why. I was like, God, I said, oh, God, I'm frustrated. I said, I want to, but you don't come out, so I didn't want to go to church. I said, I ain't got for like a dry, I ain't been to church. I listen to my church music still. Oh, with my husband trying to get things together at our other, our other house. Yeah. I ain't been praying. <laughs> I got to post out there, and I lay on the couch and pray, go straight to sleep, get up, go straight to work, come home. <laughs> Um, probably watch a little TV, a little cartoon. Got a little cartoon. You <laughs> go to sleep. But I'm more happier than anything. I'm more happy because I have God in my life. I'm leaning on God. I'm following God. This is the, the best way. When you lean on the world, because he said, he, he said the world is here and the fullness that it is. So everything belongs to God. And if God opened the door, he will open that door for you. Can nobody shut it? That's right. And I thank God. He opened the door. When he shut it, it's because of what you're going that way. That song say, when he said, he said, oh, that the last song you see, to my will and to my way, he, I lead you. What that, I lead you. He leading us. Even with, what was that last Tuesday? We, uh, we sang a song about being led. God is leading us on. Yes, he is. And I don't want to miss that. You know, yeah. when we miss church, you know you missing something. Yes, you missing yes. your blessing. Yes. You, you missing what God wants you to do. Yes. You know, I'm trying to yes. get, you know, the more you follow God, the more you can come to church and hear the word of God. It's just like when you're at home, you still got to serve God no matter what. If you don't serve God at home, that means you're trying to show out in front and come to church and say, oh, I've been doing this. You know, I, I, I failed, you know, a couple times, but I'm, I'm, I'm shaking it off. I got to get back up. So if I stay down, you know, I say, I say I failed. I say I backstay. I say I failed, you know. I said, all right. I said, the devil is working. He's trying to keep me down. I said, no. I said, no, you keep me down. I don't know it's me. I got to get back up, you know. I said, Lord, I want to make it. If you, if, if you don't shake it off, you don't tell the devil, no. We broke that devil. You gonna stay down there in the pit with him, and you don't give up. You gonna walk it on that dry land, walking. He 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 gonna open the Red Sea. Just keep on going. It's open. It's open. No matter what, it's open. It's wide open. My God, it's open. How I gonna shout out? He caught up on shout. Woo! How I gonna shoot? How I gonna stop? Woo! How I gonna shout? Now I'm gonna see. Woo! How I gonna shoot? Come on, I'm gonna stop. Glory to God. Woo! I'm so grateful.
faithful. I'm so faithful. I just want to keep going and keep being obedient. I know they always say, don't give it after the fact, give it beforehand. But I didn't say yes, I said yes, but I was sitting on, the Lord had already given me a word, was recovery, recover, recovery. And I was supposed to pop up and get it. And then Sister Candace get up and get that. I said, my God, Lord, that's you. I said, that was you. That was you. That's a recovery testimony. Hallelujah. Okay, that's the kind of thing somebody else want to run on the church, sister. Because that is awesome. That is awesome. I love to see and, and hear how God can do those things. And we've been calling them from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. We've been calling them home. So I just appreciate God. I know I was. And then the, even that song, Sister Debbie, I looked at Sister uh, Becky. I said, I was supposed to. That song dropped in my spirit last Tuesday. Or this last Tuesday was, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to you. I said, whoa, wow, that's God, you know. I love that stuff, man. That's awesome. So I know it wasn't before the fact, but it's still recovery. Recover. Recovery. Hallelujah. God's in the recovery yes. business. Yes. He's recovering those. Yes. He's recovering those who've been out, bringing them home. And I appreciate yes. you. Yes. What a mighty God we serve. How great is our God. <laughs> this is just so good. Um, man, I'm just so full from hearing about how God is taking care of his people. How he's recovering the lost. How he's giving back. How he's filling up. How he is fulfilling promise. God is great. And just during this service, right after we had sung one of the songs I had gotten, um, God, the that the test is to increase your faith, but for God to get the glory. He's increasing your faith. But he's getting the glory. So we can look back to him when you can say when I've been through all of this. And I know it was God. It wasn't me. It was a situation. But God. And that he's so good. He's so faithful. And uh, he's just so good. But in my, in my reading this morning, I was in Matthew 20, 21. And it was talking about uh, in verse 19. And it said when uh, a lot of things happened in this chapter. But by chapter, in verse 19, he done thrown the folks out of the, out of the tabernacle. <laughs> he was healing folks. He, he done, done all kinds of things already. But he got down here to verse 19 and he said, And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever and presently the fig tree withered away and when the disciples saw it they marveled saying how soon is the fig tree withered away they were amazed and Jesus answered and said unto them verily I say unto you if ye have faith and doubt not ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree but also if ye shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. And Brother Gary got up when he opened the service talking about God is still answering prayer. And we got the confirmation. Sister Nicole telling about how God was concerned enough to touch her dog. Yeah. To us, that's a little thing, but he touched her dog. Yeah. That's, that, that's a good thing. That's right. 
All dogs might not go to heaven, but he know that you love your dog. And he touched your dog because that was in your heart. And your husband cared enough to mention that dog in the service of the day. So he cared about your dog, but he cared about your daughter. A mother worried about that situation of maybe being put in a situation. And that quickly. God changed that situation and put her on another ship. And we hear about Sister Candace all through that. Seemed like she just hit bottom. And I remember the Lord had given me to pray for our daughters. Sister Diddy, he's touching those daughters. And you know we've been praying for Samantha. And I'm telling y'all, prayers are working. And I'm going to tell you how they're working. And Sister Candace, you encourage me. Sister Sharona, you encourage me. Because she's hit bottom a couple of times. She's, she's hit it. She's been in a cycle. Doing good, doing good. Woo. Doing good, doing good. Woo. Trust the Lord for a while. Woo. We can't stop trusting God. We can't get to a place where I get to be doing okay. And it's like, okay, God, I got this. I don't need you anymore. We can't do that. We got to be steadfast in prayer and believing and working, seeking him to stay under his covering. Or we can fall again. We can hit bottom again. But you know, I've been requesting prayer. And you know, a lot of you know she's my, that's my daughter's sister. The Lord put her in my care when she was 10 years old. And I've seen a lot of things happen. But uh, I knew she, this is the worst bottom she's ever hit. And I was actually afraid for her life. But you know that you've got to put them in the hand of the Lord. All we can do is pray and trust, believing that, Lord, you're going to take care of this child. After you've been through certain things with people, you realize you can't. Mama can't always get them out. Daddy can't always get them out. And, uh, you know, I appreciate your prayers. I do. I appreciate your prayers. But, uh, and the Lord, uh, I was at work and I was able to, I don't even know how we got on the conversation. Uh, but I was giving a testimony about her, but how I put her in the Lord's hand. And I was praying. And the Lord has given me a coworker that I can, we just thank the Lord together. We appreciate the Lord together. We pray together. <laughs> we believe God together for things. And, uh, we were sitting there talking and sharing and uh, folks was crying and, you know, <laughs> but it's okay because I got to trust God. Yeah. And me and the other co-worker, we prayed and I went home and you guys have been praying. Yeah. And uh, I got up yesterday morning and just doing my Bible reading. And let me go back. It's just a Joyce. She gave me a word. I believe it was last weekend. And, and, uh, and just, just to keep on praying. That's what I got. Keep on praying. The Lord is hearing. And they have some peace. And uh, I was encouraged. And uh, got up yesterday morning. And I, I, I probably talked to Samella more in the last... 30 days than I've talked to her in the last two years, which is a miracle in itself. You know, because when we're not doing right, we, we don't want to hear right. <laughs> don't want to hear it. But I've been praying to the Lord, Lord, give me something. Don't let me get ahead of you. Give me words to say, Lord. Just, you know, I don't want to to chase her away, but I want to draw it to you, Lord. I, give me some wisdom. And the Lord in that, I was, you know, he'll meet me sometimes when I'm up playing the piano, you know. And we had one of those nights, and he, he gave me, speak his name. The name of Jesus. It doesn't matter where you are. There is no distance that's too far. He'll come to you, just speak his name. And while he gave me that song, she just came to me strong. And, you know, the verses to that are just as dynamic as the chorus but I said 
said, okay. And I just texted her that little course. And then I got a text back saying, pray, pray for me. I said, well, praise Jesus. That's a breakthrough right there. <laughs> and then yesterday when I got up and I'm reading and uh, just talking to the Lord and I almost get to work and I wanted to text Mo to check on him because he had to work all night. And uh, I saw a text that came at 1.30 in the morning. Pray for me right now. Don't call me. Just pray for me right now. Now, I didn't get it during the night. And then at about 3 o'clock, another text had come through that said, call me and pray with me. And so I was like, oh, Lord. But I was so encouraged that she was saying, pray, pray, pray. But I didn't know what was going on. But I knew I'd been praying. So, you know, and I knew the Lord would have woke me up because he's done that before, too. He's awakened me at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I had to pray. My husband got up and was like, what's wrong? And I said, I just got to pray. Yeah. And, uh, but I got to work and I was like, oh, I don't want to call at work. But I got, to, I got to call. I got to pray. So I was like, Lord, let me find a spot so I can talk to her. And you know, the bathroom was a good spot. Yeah. It's a good spot. And I found a little bathroom off in the corner, waiting for the lady to get out. And I called her. She started talking to me. She just broke down. And she said, I'm in the worst condition I've ever been. She said, I've been, I've hit bottom of love before, but this is the worst. I know it. I know it. And she was looking for direction. She was looking for something from the Lord. And she had told me she went to a prayer meeting. <laughs> and somebody had told her to put some oil on the doorpost. Yeah. I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> and I told her, I said, well, let me tell you. I said, you know about the origin of that. Don't you put in the blood on the doorpost. How when the children of Israel were about to be released from the Egyptians, they told them to put the blood on the doorpost because their enemy was about to be destroyed. <laughs> and I said, something's about to be destroyed. You keep listening to God. But whatever the case, we prayed with her. And, uh, but it just was amazing to me to see how the Lord just started working things out, how he started changing things. Yeah. Things are still happening, yeah. still in the midst of it. It doesn't mean that what you've been going through, right. you're still not going to have to go through the consequences of some of those things. Right. They're going to try to follow you. Yeah. But the thing that the Lord is showing, you can come out. Yeah. That I can bring you out. Yeah. I appreciate God. Yeah. He cares. He's listening. Yeah. He knows. He knows. And he's the only one able. He's the only one able to do it. He's the only one mighty enough to do it. He's the only one qualified. The only one qualified. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? As had seen, is not heard, was recorded in God's word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful?
in our lives, and I'm glad. I appreciate it for, uh, I went to uh, New Orleans, and before I left, Amen. I had um, uh, something happened where my alarm system got wacky, and it wouldn't turn off. And I ended up having to uh, have the tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And I ended up having to go uh, to have them come down from Grand Rapids to turn it off or whatever. And then, um, so the alarm system wasn't working. Uh, all the street lights on my side of the street, all off. Don't ask me why. You know, and I called a AEP and they don't know. You know, he's trying to come up with all kinds of shoes. But anyway, it's been like that for three weeks. So here I'm about to go out of town and alarm's not going to be set. No, sitting in the dark, the house pitch black dark in the middle of the hood, you know, but then I said, Lord, you know, it's about you. It ain't about with this condition that I'm in, you know, because you knew this was going to happen before. I left here going, you know, and so it, it, if, if you don't keep the city, well, you know, what, the watchman watching vain, so what am I doing? I went right on, you know, to, to, to where I was going and coming back, and, and I appreciate the Lord because he's given us more confidence in these testimonies and things going forth that he hasn't stopped. He's not off the throne. He's still on the throne. He's still in control regardless of what we're going through. He's allowing it. All these things are happening. These things are happening. They're concerning me. He, he let these things happen because this is his will concerning me. And I appreciate him for that. And then when Sister um, uh, Regina was talking about praying and, and God had just had me for the last, since Demetri been out, uh, had me just praying. And he just keeps saying, just pray, just pray. And you know, then I get to praying and feeling okay. Then he do something else stupid and I get mad and whatever. And the Lord said, no, just keep praying. Right. And I keep praying. And, and that's why I have to be. I have no other recourse because see, the, the king's heart uh, is in the Lord's hand. He can turn it for the seven way he chooses. It's not me, but he's wanting me to just keep praying. One night I was, one day I came to church and I was down here and I was praying uh, where Brother Lim um, I'm sorry, um, Lamont was sitting. Yeah, let me on too. Yeah, was sitting. And so I, I was praying and I was just bellying out, oh, Lord, dot, dot, dot. And you saw uh, just everything I could think of. He said, is anything too hard for me? I, I, I got up off my knees with all that belly aching. And then I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to do just what you say. I'm just going to keep praying. I'm going to keep on trusting. I don't know where he is today. You couldn't, I, if you, somebody asked me he was, I don't know where he is. But you know, it's okay because God knows where he is. He has got it. And he let me know that more than one time. I got it. You rest. You know, because therefore, and for a while, I was saying, when he, you know, uh, uh, a few weeks back, I was saying, you know what, Lord? I am just so tired of my house just being on, just, just spirits. I'm just so tired. You know, I want my peace back. Well, you know, it all, when you ask what you ask for, you don't always necessarily want it. But, you know, I don't know where he is, but I got peace. I got peace. You know what? I got peace in my home. I got peace in my mind. I know he's okay. Because God got him. I appreciate our God.
I'm going to lead you into all truth. I appreciate God because that's my desire today. You know, I want to be so sensitive to God where I'm, I'm just basically walking blind. You know, I don't have to have my eyes open. I don't have to see what the next step is. But I'm just, just walking blindly, following God. You know, and I appreciate the Lord. I appreciate for him for um, allowing me to have life, health, strength, just to being able to be a part of the body of Christ, striving, um, trying to uh, continue this vision and for him to brighten my vision even, you know, brighter, you know. But I appreciate the Lord. I appreciate God for all of you, and I appreciate him for all the testimony. They were so wonderful today. They were so wonderful. You know what I mean? It gives you just such a zeal, just such a, just a run on, you know. It just makes you want to run on. Life. I'm telling you, I'm growing, I'm growing every day, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I know my mother's my chest in, in, in my house because don't nobody, nobody know what I'll be going through each day. That's all right, crazy. She can work the last third, but the Lord knows I love her. And that's why I, I pray every morning, Lord, give me that strength to deal each day. So that you know, I don't. I'm not in her shoes, so I don't know what she's going to or whatever. But I have to, you know, learn, you know, ask the Lord to help me to deal with it every day. But, you know, he, he, he just worked so much in my life. Last week, I suppose I had surgery because um, I have a cyst on my tonsils, and they told me I have to have it removed. So I went and had everything done, my blood work, all the tests and everything needed to be done to get ready for my surgery. I was getting the house ready, you know, with mom and everything ready. So at the last minute before I, I was before it tapped me to get ready to have my surgery, they tell me I needed $5,000. I said, $5,000? I said, for what? I have insurance. And she said, well, let me call you back because it's showing right here that you, um, we, they're not going to pay this. So they call the insurance company and they say they only pay for the doctor to perform the surgery and not for me to go to the hospital to have this anesthesia and everything else. I don't have to have $5,000. I said, why are you calling me, right? And I was before I had to have my surgery. Why you know nobody tell me? I said, I don't have $5,000 to bring you. She said, well, do you have $2,500? I said, no, you better just have $5,000. <laughs> 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 so I said, well, well, we'll call, we'll um, have somebody call you and you tell you to sell payment plans to, um, Pay on this so you don't have the surgery. No, she said, Well, anyway, you're gonna have to call and postpone the surgery um, because um, we can't do anything until you pay something, you know, pay that $25 or $5,000. I said, Well, okay. So I called Brother Adams and I told him the situation. And I said, Well, I didn't want to have the surgery anyway. No, I know that. <laughs> he said, Well, maybe that's the Lord's plan for you not to have the surgery. Amen. And I tell you, the night, you know, because I was already feeling sick about everything. They tell me how long I was going to be bleeding for days and stuff. And, you know, how to control and stuff. I said, I don't want to do all the deal. You know, be down already, you know, running my daycare and stuff. I said, I said, Lord, I don't need this right now. I said, Lord, heal, heal me, please. Mm -hmm. Heal my body. Yeah. Heal me. You know, so much, you know, yes. just going on. I said, you know, I need to be here, you know, be around for my mother. And I said, I need to be around, you know, around here, you know, for everybody else, you know. I, I face about everybody else before I face about myself. So I you know I thank the Lord for that. And so I said and so that night that night on to now I start feeling better. I said, Lord, is this you who want don't want me to have a surgery because I don't want to have it? But I'm gonna thank him in advance because he has done so much for me. Something you working in my life, yeah. and you know he told like he I spoke to Ben Gay's testimony earlier this year about you know I had found out that my father that I thought my father for fifty years is not my father, mm -hmm. and you know Mama being in my she is she can't tell me who my father is, mm -hmm. and I said well I, said, I could be a rich woman I don't even know you know. <laughs> 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 
don't know who your father is. He said, I'm your father. He said, I'm your everything. <laughs>
what can you have? What you can take away? I mean, he ought to get a good. No matter, no matter what we might think or what we might say or what we go through and what we're not going to, God is all to get a good. He is good. I mean, regardless, I mean, I, I generally tell people now that I guess I pick it up from Dave Ramsey. When people ask me, how are you doing? A lot of times I say, well, then I deserve. Because if I get what I deserve, I wouldn't be able to even talk to you. You couldn't ask me a question because I'd be dead and gone. But, you know, God, God basically, what already takes us through, and what he takes us through is to bring us to a desire hand, right? Yeah. You know, he's he, he bringing us everything we go to. I mean, you look at it. All things work together for good. A lot of times we don't see ourselves, we don't understand ourselves, but God will take us down the road. What he said, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he's going to do what? Lead us and guide us into our truth. So we we can we can run. Our brother, I'm saying the other day about that sheep. You know, sometimes God, Sister Candace, will break your leg just to save them. And that's what the good shepherd do. You know, the, the sheep don't listen, and he just take him, break his leg, he keep on wandering away, and after a while, by the time his, his leg healed, he forget about the wandering after that. So God will take us to a place just to save us, just to deliver us. So I'm thankful, Brother Jermaine, you're going to start talking about, you know, that, you know, you have to trust God. You have to obey God. You have to do those things. You know, we have to hold on the, the word of God. It, that's our holy defense. My defense is in the Lord. And it's his word. It's, it's his word that I hid in my heart that I'm not sin against. You know, we, we go on so many roads and so many things happen to us. And sometimes, you know, that's, that's the point here. A just man fall seven times. Seven times. And, he get back up. and he get back up. The problem is, we don't get up a lot of times. We, that's, that's the top regimen you're talking about. You know, a lot of times we don't get back up. We sit there and wallow in it oh and getting self pity and getting all, the, all kind of stuff we get mixed up with. You know, you know, over the years, it's something that keeps quickening to me. Guilt. A lot of times, there's what? No condemnation? What does scripture go? Okay. So it's no condemnation in the walk of the flesh. Okay. Hear the catch. You walk. You see? Okay. So it's no condemnation in that walk of the flesh, right? No, it will be spirit. Okay. It's those that walk of the spirit, right? So a lot of times we get in the flesh. And it's condemnation. But what happened now? What happened? What do you think happened most of the time? We stay right there in the flesh. And that's why we have condemnation. Because we stay in the flesh. If we just get back up and get back in the spirit, there's no condemnation there. Because we're not in the flesh anymore. We're in the spirit. So that's what, that's what keep a lot of saints locked up. You know, a whole bunch of foolishness when all they had to do is just realize that if you're feeling condemnation, where are you? In the flesh. In the flesh. That's right. So get out the flesh and get in the spirit. When you do that, the condemnation disappears. Praise God. So that, that's the problem. When blood down, we fall. We won't get back up because we stay in condemnation. But a just man will realize that you can't stay there. You have to get up. I got, I got, I got six kids. And then I had the son-in-law them to hit, and then he was more than that. So I claimed them. You know, I, I tell Daniel this one. I'm messing with him. Anyway, I tell him this one thing. When he might be smart, I said, you know you're part of the family. And I'm not going to treat you different from I treat them. But at the same time, I do. Because things I tell them, I just blows them up about certain things. I won't do them like that. So he's still getting special treatment. But but praise God. But that's the way I got six. I got six kids plus a son or whatever I do. But I realized that I cannot change people. I can't, I can't change myself either. I have to depend on God. I have to present. We have to present 
What does scripture say? Present your body a living sacrifice, only and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know what your reasonable service are? Is to present yourself. Is to, is to come. You know what? You know what happened to Hannah? Hannah was in the garden there. And when, let, let's go up to Job, what Job said. When, when, when the sons of God come to present themselves, guess what happened? The devil showed them also to present himself. Without, he wasn't justified. But look, we have to keep on presenting ourselves. Yes, sir. Amen. Adam, God did have a relationship with Adam. Adam was presenting himself every day. God showed up. Adam was there, brother Daddy. Yes, sir. But one day it wasn't there. Why? Because he was in the flesh. Yeah. He got in the flesh. He got in carnality. And he hid himself from God. But we can hide from God. If we take the wings of the mind, wherever we go, God is there. Amen. Yes, sir. Where can I go from the, from the present? No matter what you do, you might think you're doing your thing, you get away, but you're not. All he do is really in your hand. He just really in your hand. And you, you go ahead and run. You know, kick up your leg, run down the hill like a wild elf on the loose. But you keep on going. But God, have a way, if you're his, if you're his, if it belongs to God, you only can run as far as the rope go. But he's going to stop you. Yes, so I want him to stop me. Yeah. I want him to keep stopping me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just thankful the way the service went through there. Yeah. I thank God for what he's doing. He, you know, he, he helping us. Yeah. Whether we know it or not. Did somebody plan all of this? No, sir. No, nobody planned. Everybody start getting up and start saying something. And then somebody say something else. And before you know it, you know, if you want to cook some gumbo, you have to bring all the ingredients. But you know, oh God, good to us. He bring everything. Yeah. All we have to do is show up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember when I was in Florida, this guy invited me, brother Gary, to a party. Me and my, my, my buddy. And when we get there, as a matter of fact, we walked two and a half miles to get to the party. When we get there, we were the party. Yeah. They expect us to provide everything for them to have a party. <laughs> but the kind of God that we serve, he just said, show up. When you show up, he got everything that you need. Amen. Everything. You know, he got everything furnished. Yes. He says table. Yes. He's furnished. Yes. Yes. It's a scripture, right? Yes. So I'm thankful to be here. Thank God for his goodness. Yes. Amen. God been good to us. Yes. So good to us. So you just sit there and listen. 18 years coming, Sister Candace. Mm -hmm. Just sit here and listen. Yeah. I've been waiting for this day for a long, long time. Yeah. And Brother James said, I ain't got time yet. <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting. I'm waiting some more, too. Yes. But I ain't, I ain't got time yet. I just got to keep on waiting because God of a way a change in the situation. That's why I'm not sanctifying all things that a lot of these people sanctify by brother death. I'm not. Because that means what I'm doing here is getting approval where God is giving approval. And when you do that, you cause the person to be locked up where they don't need to be locked up. Don't don't you don't you do it. That's why that's why the scripture of Paul said clear. He said, Lay your hand, lay on so that they know man. Neither to be a partaker of people's sin. When people do certain things, don't sanctify. Just just reserve. I say, Lord, you help them, Lord. But do not touch the things that God don't not touch it. If God don't touch it, you don't touch it either. Just wait on God, and God will take care of everything. Right, Brother Gary? Amen. So, I'm thankful to be here.